All right, we will now begin. Uh, welcome everybody to our uh, coronavirus update in Colorado. Uh, we're we're at uh, 4,678 new cases today. There's been a, a a leveling out. It hasn't gotten uh, worse on the, but it hasn't gotten much better. So hopefully, this is a place where uh, things will start to turn. But that really is entirely depends on whether we're succeeding now and in the next few weeks on wearing our masks whenever we're around others, uh, avoiding social interactions, keeping our distance. But um, before, you know, it's all, it, it's it's welcome news uh, for things to stop getting worse. Uh, it'll be more welcome when they start materially improving. Uh, we have 1,559 currently hospitalized, uh, also down a bit from the highs, uh, which is good. But, you know, just to put things in perspective, it was only Early October, when we had three to four hundred hospitalized, and now over fifteen hundred, uh, I would add that the tragically the, the the deaths, the death rate, that's the last one to start coming down. It has not really started coming down yet because that is uh, has a lag factor. So hopefully, we're doing a little better, uh, and at least things aren't getting worse. But uh, we really want things to get better so we can go back to to living our lives and normal and all of those wonderful things. And, and uh, the, that is really uh, a function of how well we, we do social distancing, how well we reduce our interactions with others, uh, wear masks, 50 to 70% effective. You know, we're, we're gonna talk a little bit about the vaccine and we just in the last few days rolled out wonderful vaccine um, plans, 94%, 95% effective, very, very highly effective. But we have today uh, a vaccine that's 50 to 75 percent effective. That's called a mask. So not, of course, as effective as as the vaccine that goes in the arm, but uh, can play a role in reducing your odds of getting it by 50 percent. But also when everyone wears masks, it reduces the community transmission, reduces the spread, allows us to open things, more things to be open for us to enjoy them safely, uh, et cetera. Earlier this week, we did. Earlier this week, we we walked through our plans on the vaccines. We also did a dry run of the vaccine delivery uh, into Eagle County. Um, our our top priority, of course, is saving uh, the maximum number of lives, ending the public health crisis, getting back to normal. Uh, I think at this point, people know that doesn't instantaneously happen. In fact, what's important to know is when you are fortunate enough to be able to get the vaccine, you don't have immunity a day later even a week later, right? You get the first dose of the vaccine, 20 to 25 days later, the second dose, and then within two weeks of that, 10 days of that is when you develop the immunity. So uh, I wanna make sure people are smart as we get vaccinated. We've talked about the marathon, right? I think when you get that vaccine, that means you're you know, 50 yards from the end, you can see it, right? And then what we, we don't want to do is that's when you do a big dance and use all your energy and then collapse and don't make it to the finish line. You got that vaccine, finish out the 50 yards. We're just talking another um, you know, month, month and a half till that immunity builds. First dose, second dose, 20 to 25 days later, within two weeks, immunity. Uh, there is some evidence that there's some immunity from that first dose, uh, not, not as significant, not as effective, but uh, there might be some increased protection, but that's not something that we want to count on. We want that full 94, 95% immunity. And we're encouraged by initial data that also shows that even for those who contract it uh, in that, um, you know, again, 94% is not 100%. So some people contract that it is more mild. That is preliminary data, but that is similar to what we see with the flu vaccine, right? You get the flu vaccine, you hope it prevents the flu, but then if you get the flu, it is a more minor version of the flu. That there's initial evidence that would indicate that that is the case with the uh, COVID vaccine as well. Um, needs to be demonstrated. We know it prevents 94, 95%. That's demonstrated the reduction in severity, encouraging uh, data. Uh, just yesterday, the FDA, an FDA panel um, formally recommended the FDA approve the Pfizer vaccine. That's the that'll be the first one. Then the Moderna vaccine. Um, we, uh, of course, uh, want doses for everybody in Colorado, uh, expect that. But the first batch that we are getting will have 46,800 of the Pfizer doses. And then we, we believe the first Moderna shipment, uh, hopefully within a week or two after that, will have 95,600 doses. So uh, one of our priorities in this is to ensure that not a single dose goes to waste. 
So we are making sure that uh, all of the entities receiving the vaccine, and, and, and this is a, we walk through the whole logistical endeavor, it's the uh, nursing homes, it's the hospitals, all the entities who are receiving it have to administer it within 72 hours, or we'll take it back and use it for someone else. I mean, it's not, it, it should never go to anybody to sit there. Uh, and it also, of course, um, you know, expires. So we want to give them, you know, 72 hours when they get it, they can deliver it. Uh, and if they don't, we are, we have many, many others who would love to receive that vaccine. Um, it, it's also, you know, these, these vaccines come in, in batches and we want to make sure that when one is, is deployed, opened, removed from free, from freezing, that every single one of them is then administered in, in someone's arm. Uh, while the uh, the vaccine is good, so that that's our goal with this, um, our ability to quickly vaccinate folks and report those doses uh, administered uh, is going to be very important uh, in 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 reaching more immunity levels, saving lives, returning to normal, ending the crisis. Uh, we're hopeful that we can get through the what we the phase one that we laid out of vaccinations this winter. Uh, obviously, all of this depends on the amount received. Every single dose has been ordered by the federal government, right? So, so everything being produced then gets distributed based on pro rata population, our percentage of the national population. Boom, uh, it's fair. We we don't know the exact numbers till we get them. Uh, the, the feds don't either, but uh, at least we know that first week uh, number that we'll be getting of the Pfizer vaccine, 46,800. And then we believe, well, again, trust and verify, but we believe the first Moderna vaccine, hopefully a week or two later, needs to be approved, obviously, before 95,600. We do not yet have visibility into week three or week four, week five. Uh, we would love to see those numbers goes up, go up to fulfill our orders for every man and, woman, man and woman in Colorado and child. Eventually, they're not yet approved for under 18. There are uh, groups out there, 12 and up, being tested. Uh, right now, it is uh, their, the, this preliminary approval on the Pfizer 18 and up. So uh, we're, we're 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 getting there, right? We're we're getting we're getting there. The triumph of modern science, not just a vaccine, but a highly effective vaccine. I mean, this is gold standard, 95 percent, end the pandemic. It, it won't make uh, coronavirus extinct necessarily, just like measles and and mumps. They're not extinct. But it'll relegate it to a um, um, rare event, um, which is which is wonderful. Now, um, while it's exciting, again, we're, we we have to really double down on 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 getting these numbers down so we can return to more meaningful life and socializing. Uh, but we we have to show progress on the numbers so it's reasonably safe. Um, and as we get closer to the winter holiday season and Happy Hanukkah, we had the first night last night. Merry Christmas coming up. Kwanzaa, winter solstice, uh, those who just uh, like having trees, whatever your religious tradition or faith is, or however you like to observe uh, December and Christmas, uh, we know that this one will be a little bit different. And um, when Dr. Fauci joined us uh, what, a week and a half, two weeks ago or so, he highlighted some of the risks around travel and holiday season and crowded shopping areas, uh, Black Friday, all of those things. And and that's really the same for for Christmas. Uh, people just need to be very very careful this Christmas. It's possible some of your elderly relatives in nursing homes might be getting the vaccine around Christmas. But here's the important thing to remember: they are not immune right when they get that first dose. So they get that dose. It doesn't mean that they can be safely visited the next day, right? They might have some resistance within a couple of weeks, but the second dose is 20 to 25 days later, and then 10 days after that. 95 96 percent that means grandma grandpa safe visit have fun uh but not they oh they got the vaccine now two days later it's christmas i'm gonna go see them they they have there's no evidence they have any additional protection you know two days after they get a vaccine your body is just starting to create antibodies from that first dose so um that's that's very important um that as we plan our holiday season visit with people virtually um you know outdoors with masks uh, have your uh, plans uh, later. Obviously, many people have the religious plans this time of year, uh, Christmas uh, mass and so forth, uh, the social distancing, the mask wearing, all of those things. Hanukkah is generally celebrating people's homes, so it's not usually a, 
a need to go to a, a synagogue for that. But um, if you are in, engaging in the religious aspects, be safe, be smart, and, and, and particularly with the prevalence we have here, you know, the, the one in 40 to one in 45 Colorado is contagious. Uh, I would very strongly advise people, you know, that are vulnerable to find alternative ways to honor your faith traditions. If you're in your 70s or 80s, um, even with the precautions, mass reducing to 50 percent social distancing, um, it really uh, you're, you're almost there and, 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 and just sort of find that inner reservoir of strength uh, to find a way to to get through this holiday season so that you can enjoy many more holiday seasons. Right. We don't we we uh, we don't want to. Uh, take that victory dance 50 yards from the marathon finish line and expend all of our energy and then collapse. We want to finish, finish strong. Um, uh, we'll be celebrating with my family virtually, of course. Um, you know, some ideas, you can watch the same movie, Christmas movie, and then discuss it with your family. Uh, you can, you know, eat dinner together virtually. Um, obviously some people are traveling and if you are just like for Thanksgiving, please take every precaution, but, uh, we, we, we all know the additional risks of traveling. If you do plan to see loved ones over Christmas, you self, you can self quarantine for 10 days before, um, two weeks, 10 days before where you're staying at home, not, do, not taking any risks, not going out. If you're able to do that. Um, that obviously can reduce the risk as well. And we want to encourage people to shop locally for their loved ones. Um, you can avoid crowds, and many stores have online centers, but also a curbside pickup. Uh, Colorado is full of all sorts of creative small businesses that carry vastly superior made in Colorado products that are perfect for letting your friends and family, wherever they live, know that you care that you're thinking about them. Maybe it's somebody who couldn't visit Colorado this year from Florida or New York or Colorado or, or California because of the risk. So send them a little piece of Colorado, right? Uh, send them something made in Colorado and of course a rain check on when they can safely uh, visit. You can visit Colorado SBDC slash shop dash local to find local business supports near you. Uh, I know this is not uh, an easy thing to to get through these final days, especially in this wondrous, wonderful Christmas season and holiday season. But Christmas uh, and, and the season is really about love. And the best way that we show love for one another is to protect one another, especially uh, our aunts and uncles and mothers and fathers and grandparents. So we don't want to put the people that we love in jeopardy. We want to make sure that everybody's around for a big old Christmas celebration next year. Um, so wear a mask around others, stay six feet apart, avoid social gatherings with people who aren't in your immediate household. Uh, we want to minimize the spread of the disease. Hopefully the leveling out will, um, uh, change to a significant reduction, but that's all in, in our hands, in your hands. Uh, and together, uh, we can have a meaningful holiday season, uh, save lives and hasten the return to normalcy and the end of the pandemic. Thank you, and we'll take some questions. Hi, Governor, it's Jessica Seaman with the Denver Post. Um, this wave of the pandemic has become more deadly than what we saw in the spring. Is there more that the state could be doing to um, try to limit transmission and ultimately these deaths? Yeah, so uh, nationally, uh, tragically, uh, the, the daily record has been broken. There's been like three over 3,000 people two days ago. I, 25, 2,600 uh, people paid the ultimate price uh, nationally uh, yesterday. Uh, here here in, uh, in Colorado, we are now at 3,005 people throughout the entire crisis who have died uh, from COVID. Uh, about a third of those have been in the last... Um, months month month or two um the the two thirds were were earlier uh i think we've uh really wanted to elevate with people that now is the moment of greatest risk of contracting the virus it's greater than it was in march it's greater than it was in july the most coloradans have it that are now contagious now um that's why and people always ask well why you know can't we hang out and 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 go to bars and all that uh, it, it, the, the normal way we socialize would lead to tragic levels of loss of life. Double, triple, quadruple this number that is enough to mourn. So many, so many Coloradans, just over 3,000 that have 
uh, paid the ultimate price. Um, others that struggle daily in the hospital with their lives. Um, well, the best thing that we can do to save additional lives is to avoid socializing with people outside of our homes, keep a distance from others, and wear our masks whenever we're around others um, at work, at the store. Um, if we can, if we can do those things well, uh, we can make sure that we can honor the memory of those who've lost by preventing additional unnecessary loss from this pandemic here in Colorado. Hello, Governor. This is Vinny Deltrude. I said Bloomberg News in Denver. New Mexico is banning non-elective surgery in acute care hospitals until early January and are moving closer to crisis care rationing. They've been low on ventilators, et cetera. Is Colorado close to emergency orders such as Mexico's? New well, Mexico. We, Thank yeah, you for having the information daily. New Mexico has had a, had a higher infection rate um, over the last few weeks. I don't know their equipment situation. Um, if they do uh, need equipment, um, hopefully there's sufficient national pool to provide that. We do not have a shortage today of ventilators or of uh, hospital beds. Uh, we have ready to go our alternative care sites. So if we are near that capacity within a week or two of breaching our hospital capacity, we will activate first the two smaller sites uh that we have and if necessary the convention center so yes uh we are closer to that than we were two months ago or three months ago we stand ready uh but we will make that uh decision based on the actual uh data that we have on the hospital capacity i'm hopeful that the thoughtful efforts around mask wearing and social distancing will prevent our hospitals from being overrun but yes, we have seen in other states, including neighboring states, uh, having to go to some of those crisis standards of care. Hello, Governor. Jesus Carrasquel from Noticias Univision Colorado. Governor, ya tiene el plan de distribución de la vacuna, pero ¿cómo garantiza que la vacuna llegue a las minorías, incluyendo nuestra comunidad hispana e incluso los indocumentados? Se trata de salvar la mayor cantidad de vidas de personas y poner fin a esta crisis con uh, el vacuano. No le vamos a pedir su documentación. Hemos iniciado una, un grupo llamando Campeones por la Equidad de las Vacunas que ayudará a facilitar el alcance comunitario y la participación de las partes interesados espe espe específicamente con las comunidades latinos en Colorado, incluido en español y inglés. También, también estamos en el proceso de eju ejecutar un contrato de marketing que permitirá una campaña de información sólida, receptiva y dará a las jurisdicciones locales acceso al contenido correcto. La campaña de marketing está prevista para uh, este año y el próximo año. Uh, es muy importante que todas las vidas son un parte importante de nuestro estado y todos son un parte de nuestro plan de distribución de la vacuna. Hi, Governor. It's Rick Salinger from the Channel 4. Today we received a list of all the hospitals and health departments that are going to be receiving the doses, hopefully, in the uh, coming days and the breakdown of how many to each. How did you go about breaking it down this way. Was this also based on population or were there other factors as well? So we, uh, we uh, in our vaccine presentation uh, from earlier this week, we talked about the distribution centers and managing this, the cold supply chain, specifically uh, challenging around the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, the Moderna vaccine is easier to move, requires uh, traditional uh, freezing versus the very cold freezing levels. So the, we have distribution centers across the state, and uh, we can show you that map that shows the way that it gets to uh, to different areas, both for the hospitals 
uh, who who uh, will be administrated to people who work in the COVID ward and around COVID patients first. And then residential care uh, nursing homes are are going to be uh, uh, in that in that very first group as well, especially with that uh, Moderna vaccine. Good morning, Governor. This is Stephanie Rodriguez with Telemundo Denver. Mi pregunta para usted es: viendo días muy letales este mes y sabiendo que el público en general no va a recibir esta vacuna hasta el próximo verano, ¿cuál es su consejo o su recomendación mientras esperamos? Es muy importante saber que el momento que recibieron el vacuno uh, no tiene más resistencia contra COVID. Necesita algunas semanas. Necesitan uh, el primer parte de la vacuna y entonces 20, 25 días más tarde el segundo. Y entonces hasta una o dos semanas más, entonces uh, está seguro. Um, durante este tiempo y antes de recibir el vacuno y, y uh, después de en el tiempo inmediato, es más importante que siempre usar tapabocas, tener una distancia entre usted y otras personas y no uh, asociar con personas que no viven en su propia casa. Este es el momento más peligroso en todo el país y en nuestro estado también. Hey, Governor, uh, Jesse at the Colorado Sun. Uh, your administration has put a lot of uh, protections in place for nursing homes and prisons, but in this latest outbreak, we've seen a lot of new cases and a lot of new deaths in both places. I'm wondering if you're looking at additional steps to protect those two spots, uh, particularly if you're going to reinstate the prison population reduction orders that you had in the spring, uh, and whether you might send the National Guard in to help with testing at nursing homes. Yeah, we, we uh, as you know, have taken uh, extraordinary steps because of the, the national data, which is no exception in Colorado, that particularly uh, nursing homes are very hard hit uh, for a couple of reasons. One is the nature of congregate living, but we also have congregate living at our colleges and universities and other places. The, the reason the, the death rate has been so high is because of the age, right? So it's very different. It spreads at a college, a thousand people get it. We want to contain it, but there's really no death, and thankfully, I mean, there, there could be, but in the case of CU, no deaths um, in that outbreak, and, you know, only one or two even needed medical care, versus a death rate of 10, 12% when you're talking about folks in their 80s and 90s. So, I mean, if 10 people get it, one can die. Um, obviously, in prisons, we have people of all ages, and the priority is protecting those who are vulnerable, over 65, uh, just as we um, would... would um, prioritize people over 65 who are in the general population. So um, the, the answer is yes, additional steps taken. Uh, we, we do have testing. We have the National Guard ready to go. If the, uh, the we're, we're in a much better testing spot than we were a, a number of months ago. So, um, you know, but if there's assistance needed, we can do that. Uh, supplies are better. The Binax tests are being used. Those are the instant tests that uh, are not as accurate, but have a result in 15 minutes and, and still can help weed out some of those cases. So uh, we, we have that from the supply side. I would also point out that with some of those testing, they no longer uh, require the presence of trained medical personnel. They're easier to administer, in fact, even self-administered. So uh, we have a lot more in our arsenal around protecting both nursing homes and prisons. Uh, and any other forms of congregate living, that is tempered somewhat by the fact that the virus has a higher prevalence now than it ever had before. I'm just grateful that with the virus at this prevalence, we have the multi uh, set of tools to protect our vulnerable populations that would have only been a, a pipe dream back in March or April. Hi, Governor. This is Karina Julig from the Aurora Sentinel. Um, you said earlier this week that you're hoping that schools will be able to reopen in January. Um, that's something that's also been echoed by President-elect Biden, who announced that reopening the majority of schools is one of his um, key COVID priorities. Um, however, local school boards have seemed to be a lot more reluctant to open schools when there's a high prevalence of COVID-19 cases in the community. Um, so I guess, do you think it's realistic that schools will be able to reopen in January um, so soon after the Christmas holidays? Uh, I do, and I know districts are hard at work on their plans to to serve uh, families and keep uh, educators safe. We uh, have a 
Back to School Task Force. I'll be joining one of their meetings later today. They've really done yeoman's work. Uh, the folks who stepped up and school board members, superintendents, teachers, public health officials uh, to really provide the very best guidance, which will be forthcoming soon uh, around safe ways districts can come back. I think many districts have been successful in engaging and talking to their teachers and listening to concerns and addressing them. Uh, many districts, of course, have been back the entire fall semester. Others have only been back for part of it or with some grades. But uh, with the data increasingly shows that uh, schools are a relatively safe place to be. They're a low risk environment. Uh, in many cases, the safest place for both uh, the especially at risk students, uh, as well as for teachers and faculty when it's done the right way. Hi, good morning, Governor Polis. I have a two-part question regarding vaccines. First, what are some of the challenges of storing a vaccine that health officials across the state have to deal with, for example, shelf life and freezer temperatures? And secondly, for people concerned about taking a vaccine, what information would you like to convey to them? Yeah, so uh, there's two different vaccines, the Pfizer vaccine, the one that we expect in the next few days, is the one that requires extraordinarily cold temperatures, 80 degrees, not more than a normal freezer. The Moderna vaccine, shortly on the heels of that, is frozen the same way frozen food is frozen. There's a, a really scalable existing supply chain. This is just a drop in the bucket for that. So there are more logistical issues around the movement uh, and storage of the Pfizer vaccine. We're going to get it done. We have the plan to do it, but uh, it is uh, it involves extraordinary effort. The Moderna vaccine, uh, more conventional uh, supply chain is being used for that. But I have great confidence in both uh, that the spoilage will be minimized. They will reach uh, the target uh, people and, and be delivered on time. What was your second question? Concerned about, for people concerned about taking a vaccine, yeah. what information would you like to tell them? Well, I, I, you know, look, the FDA and the nation's top scientists have reviewed data from tens of thousands of of, uh, of people who volunteered uh, as a test to have these two vaccines. Uh, they found not only great efficacy, but also great safety, uh, meaning what people can expect is an experience similar to the flu vaccine. Uh, some people the next day have a sore arm or, or aches and pains. That is That means your body is successfully developing antibodies. It's a minor immune reaction. Uh, that happens. Some people will have nothing afterwards. You know, I in you, some years I've gotten the flu vaccine, even it's the same person. Some years I have had a sore arm and a little bit achy the next day. Other days didn't even remember that I got it. So uh, it depends on the person, but really the, the same type of uh, of reaction. Very safe, very effective, ending the pandemic, protecting yourself, saving lives. Uh, really just wonderful triumph of modern science. Hi, Governor Polis. Uh, this is Faith Miller with Colorado Newsline. Um, do you plan to extend the state eviction moratorium after the new year? Thanks. So the state uh, eviction moratorium is designed to mirror uh, the federal uh, eviction moratorium to provide greater certainty and prevent a discrepancy between uh, state and federal actions. Uh, we do plan to track closely with what the federal government is doing to avoid any confusion for landlords and tenants. Hi, this is Erin Prater with the Gazette in Colorado Springs and Denver. I have a similar question to another one that was asked, but um, what can you tell us about the progress of the education work group that you convened? I know you touched on that a bit, but around it, here in the Pikes Peak region, we're hearing some districts expressing that they want to keep their brick and mortar schools open, but unless um, the the um, the guidance for quarantining uh, for schools issued by the state is relaxed. That's just not possible at this point. So what would be your response to that? Thanks so much. So the quarantine uh, uh, guidance was uh, amended consistent with the CDC a week or two ago. So I think that's what the, the districts were talking about. So that has been done uh, and they really um, now have the tools they need to be able to return safely to in-classroom instruction, uh, protecting the cohorts and, and keeping folks safe uh, based on science and based on the, the CDC, which shares our state's priority of returning to school. The CDC, many public health departments, have also um, written extensively about the public health benefit of school. 
Uh, we often talk about the educational benefit that should be obvious to parents and families, but there's also the public health benefit uh, for families uh, of kids being able to be in that environment in a safe way. And uh, the guidance has been updated to uh, encourage uh, that to be done in a safe way. The return to bricks and mortar schools in a safe way. Hi, it's Andrea Dukakis uh, from Colorado Public Radio. Critics have said you caved to political pressure from folks when you changed the vaccine order and moved people in congregate settings down the list. Uh, specifically, why didn't you follow the advice of doctors uh, who spent a lot of months coming up with recommendations? And might they be reluctant in the future to be in an advisory role? Well, we are, uh, we track really very closely with the CDC guidelines for administering the vaccine. With the goal of saving lives, it's critical to prioritize those who are most likely to die from the pandemic. And that means people over 65, people with pre-existing conditions. Uh, there are some people that are on COVID wards that are, of course, at much higher risk um, and, and would be early on because they contract, uh, they, they, they face people with COVID in their in their daily lives and we we need them there to, tr to treat the covid but um in general uh there this this virus has a very different risk profile for people of different ages and different pre-existing conditions and uh when you get to people in their 70s and 80s uh they have a fatality rate 50 100 times greater uh than than younger people uh and 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 we're not without any fatalities for people in their 20s or 30s, but it is a uh, very low level and very rare. So with the goal of saving lives, we respect the dignity and the inherent worth of all human lives. It's important to prioritize those that are most vulnerable and are likely to face the most severe health impacts if they were to con uh, contract COVID-19. Governor Polis, this is Brian Almer from The Barn in Northeastern Colorado, and I wanted to ask you a couple of questions here. First, did you happen to see the Facebook post uh, to you directly from Caden Peel, a 15-year-old student at Moreno High School, um, asking about getting the schools reopened, reinstating activities at the schools because there's a mental health stress. It's a pretty long post, but very well written by Caden. Bottom line, would you, your administration, CDPHE, and CHASA, please reconsider the mental health damage that all of this canceling and postponing of events has done? We've had seven suicides in Northeastern Colorado since March in high school students. Yeah, I think, I, and I, I'd love to see Caden's post if you can somehow forward it to us or I can call uh, Caden. Um, and what school district did you say uh, Caden is in? Marino High School up uh, just south oh, yeah. of Sterling. Yeah, just right. So um, and and uh, so, yeah, but that, that's the reason, you know, we, we absolutely we talked earlier in this call about the health benefit of schools being back, the importance that schools are back, not just for education, of course, but that schools should also be back for in person because of mental health for students for faculty, for others involved. Uh, we strongly encourage all districts to return to in-person education. If they're doing in-person education, uh, we hope they're also doing all of those important other extracurriculars in a safe way. Uh, we, of course, uh, just recently uh, finished the, the football season uh, and, um, and, and other uh, winter sports. So I think it's, it's wonderful that you have a young leader there in Marino that is helping to lead the way in, in, in talking about the, the mental health benefit of kids being in school. We, that's exactly what we talk about in our back to school committee, trying to convince more districts that you can go back safely, you can do it in a safe way. And uh, I hope that uh, the young man is successful in, in getting uh, activities back uh, in Eastern Colorado and, and across our state. And I would encourage more students to, uh, to join in really talking about what school and what those activities mean to them. And if you can get that, show us that post, we can we can help uh, share that as well, or I can look at it and, and, and respond to it. Thank you. I think that's uh, I think that's all the questions. And I want to wish everybody a happy holiday season, a Merry Christmas. As you start making your plans, be thoughtful, be safe. Uh, initial data is that the Coloradans um, did fairly well, perhaps better than many other states over Thanksgiving, and that we're seeing some national records, but here 
uh, uh, we're, we're, it's, it's, it's been level, but uh, we, we, we need to do better. I mean, with 1,500 people in our hospitals and over 3,000 Coloradans who paid the ultimate price, um, let's make sure that we're all here for many holidays to come. Uh, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, happy holidays. See you all soon.